Hello, I'm Dan Sandweiss. I am a humane professor, and just like it says here, I am also a real life archeologist. Today is Archeology span Day 2021. I'm going to tell you something about what is archeology. span This is not archeology, span even if you've seen the movie. It's not the way we do things. This is more like it. We dig in the dirt. We have to record everything, pay a lot of attention. We go slowly and carefully, and mostly it's not filled with what you might think of as treasures. This is archaeology. It's a dirty business, but somebody's got to do it if we want to learn about the past. There's also a lot of lab work, analysis, interpretation, and write up. If you excavate a site, you destroy it. And if you don't record carefully everything you do and then publish it so that others can use the results of your work, you've simply destroyed a site for no good end, and that's wrong. So who am I exactly? I am an archeologist who works mainly in Peru. That's me a long time ago. And this is a site that I spent many years at excavating. I've also worked in Guatemala, Honduras, and Cuba. And once again, that's me in the middle. So how do we get information about the human past beyond the range of written documents? The answer, of course, is archeology. span We excavate and we do analyses to learn about that pre-writing past. So what is archeology? span That's our central question today. It is, first of all, the systematic study of the past. It's not just digging up treasures and making up some stories about them, but trying very carefully to learn what we really can that is true about the ancient past. We do this by finding and analyzing the surviving remains that people of past times have left behind for us. We do this first by looking for sites, walking across a landscape or using other techniques to find where ancient people once lived and left something behind. It's not always easy. We run into trouble in the field. There is some adventure involved and you have to persevere. Once we know where sites are, we decide which ones we need to learn more about by excavating some of them. And this is a University of Maine and University of Pittsburgh excavation at an old site in Peru in 2001. Excavations can be small scale, although the ends do justify the means, or large scale. This is an ancient structure that we excavated in the early 2000s as well. Any area altered by human activity is what we call a site, whether it was occupied for minutes or millennia. So that is your definition of an archeological site. There are many kinds of sites. There are camps of hunter gatherers, such as this camp of early fishing people from almost 13,000 years ago on the south coast of Peru. There are cave sites. This is a cave on the site I showed you previously with a very large deep structure that we excavated up on the mountain next to the site that we found this cave, although there wasn't very much in it. It was sort of a disappointment. That happens in archeology. span You don't always find what you expect, but sometimes you find really cool things that you don't expect. There are ancient villages. This is a 5,000 and even older fishing farming site on the coast of Peru. We now know more about it than we used to. Uh, the dark color is from the garbage that people deposited there as they were living. That's why it's called Waka Prieta. That means the black mound. And you can see that archeological sites exist and continue to be modified into the present. And this one has an ad for one of the most uh, commonly drunk Peruvian beers, Cristal. It says, yo tomo Cristal. That's their, that's their advertisements. Es mejor, it's better. Then we get pyramids, large mounds at sites. This is at Tucume again, 500 to 1,000 years old. And everything you see above the ground level was constructed by people of adobes and rubble. It's 45 to 50 meters high. This is a big structure. We get cities like the ancient city of Chan Chan, the capital of the Chimu empire in Peru. The Chimu people actually came and conquered Tucume late in its history. Here you see the 
big enclosures that were the palaces of the rulers. Each enclosure was for a ruler or a dynasty and a new ruler or dynasty built a new palace. So that's why there are a lot of them. But also less notable structures, less visible structures, fields, canals, roads, anything where people did activity in the past and left some kind of remains for us to find is an archeological site. So there you have it. This is the definition of a site. We also find artifacts, which are objects that were made, used, or modified by humans. Artifacts can be plain or decorated. They may have been used for one or more activities. These could range from hunting to food processing to elaborate rituals and anything you might imagine in between that humans might have done and required a tool to do it with. One of the most common kinds of artifact we find is pottery. Here you see two mostly complete pots on the left, and then you see broken potsherds on the right. Pottery is very useful for archeologists because it tells us about many functions, and often through the decoration, it tells us something about cultural identity and about time. Metal. In the later prehistoric periods, we begin to see metal working throughout the world or through much of the world, in Peru, they develop gold, silver, lead, and copper working as the principal kinds of metals they used, with copper being most common, gold and silver being the second most common. And here you see golden artifacts discovered in a site in northern Peru. Wood, which does not usually preserve well, but because the coast of Peru where I work is a desert and it's very dry, dryness is good for preserving things that were once living like plant parts or animal parts. And so we get a lot of wooden artifacts preserved. These are all involved in making textiles. The upper left are what we call spindle whorls. These were involved in making thread from raw fiber like cotton. The, uh, the uh, artifacts that you see in the bottom are related to the looms, loom boards and loom swords as also part of the weaving process for making the actual textiles once you had the thread to do it. And you can see that they were well decorated. These were important artifacts that meant something to people. Sometimes people made things out of bones, such as the pins and spoons you see on the left, and even out of gourds, such as you see on the right with pyro engraved or fire marked birds, partly marked out by cutting out little areas and inlaying pieces of white shell. Stone is very common because like pottery, it survives under almost any conditions very well. It is the most durable material that people use to make artifacts. Uh, on the left, you see a mortar and a grinding stone. And on the right, you see some stone projectile points, spearheads or arrowheads. Cloth is a, well, I guess you could figure that there would be cloth because I showed you some tools for making thread and for making textiles or cloth. This is one from the collection of the Hudson Museum that is also from ancient Peru. Sometimes we find artifacts that are made of multiple materials, composite artifacts. Here we have figurines. The red arrows point to where they were excavated, where we found them. You can see that the one on the left is made out of a gray metal. That's actually silver. If you cleaned it with silver polish, it would turn silver in color and shine. But wearing a a cloak pin made out of a copper silver alloy and a cloak made out of textile. The, two fi the figurine in the middle was made out of shell, also has clothing on it. And the one on the right, you can't see the actual figurine inside. It too, like the one on the far left was made out of silver. It has a headdress made out of tropical bird feathers, a cloak made out of multicolored threads and a silver cloak pin, which you can see here. We also get information from other kinds of remains, such as human remains, but I am not going to show you photos of dead bodies, sorry. Food remains are very important. What did people eat? How did they get it? How did they process it? Did they grow food? Did they hunt for the food? Did they fish for it? Did they collect it in the woods? Where did it come from? How much energy did it take to get the food that gave them energy? There's a lot that we can learn by studying food remains. Finally. When we have all of this information, we've found the sites, we've excavated them, we've studied the materials, the artifacts that we've gotten out of them, 
Then we interpret the things that we find and we come to our conclusions about what ancient life was like. Here's an example of an artifact that I excavated a long time ago, almost 40 years ago, in a site on the coast of Peru. What do you think this is? How do you think it was used? I'll leave you with that, but if you have some thoughts, feel free to send them to the Hudson Museum and I'll hear from them and let you know if you came up with the right answer. Have a great day and talk to you soon.